Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman, and we have a room full of people from Mississippi, which means we are down in Mississippi. We are at Richland, Mississippi. We're pretty excited about it, and uh, we'll just start uh, with uh, Mike Jones, and then we got Brad Chapel, and then we go all the way to the end to Jana Deer. Look at that. I got it right all the way down. It's like a crowd of people in here, but we have to get going. We have to tell people all about fishing down here and all about the cool things that are down around here, places to eat, places to stay. And of course, I've been lucky enough to uh, do some of that already, but uh, we'll find out some more stuff about that. We'll find out how big the lake is and how big the crappie are. So we'll start uh, we'll start with Mike because he's sitting right next to me. Tell us, this is uh, part of the uh, reservoirs that are part of the uh, Mississippi Crappie Trail, is it not? Yeah, this is the southernmost um, lake, Barnett Reservoir, um, of the um, six lakes that are on the Mississippi Crappie Trail. Yep. How big is this reservoir? It's 32,000. About 34,000. 34. Yep. That takes us over to our expert, Brad. <laughs> you got on, uh, on this reservoir? I do. I, I live on Ridgeland here, about uh -huh. 15 minutes from the lake. Spent a lot of time on this lake. Uh, I would consider this is the lake that taught me crappie fishing. Oh, wow. From A to Z. So is, Still it a deep, is it a deep lake? or Tell uh, us a little overall, bit about um, fishing. You, you know, this lake offers a little bit of everything if, when it comes to crappie fishing. If you want to fish stand in timber, we've got it. If you want to fish suspended fish, we've got them. If you want to fish brush piles, we've got them. Any kind of method that you think of when it comes to crappie fishing, this lake will catch fish by doing them. Right. Um, you know, a very high population of fish. Uh, we actually, you know, we've got both species as far as black and white crappie. Uh -huh. And it's about a 50-50 ratio when it comes into the lake. Um, overall, I would say the average depth is probably about 10 to 12 foot deep. So not very deep? Not very deep. Uh -huh. um, a lot of standing timber, a lot of old lakes, river ledges. It's got everything you could want when it comes to crappie fish. I got it. Yep. River so. system, you know, creek arms to big flats. Which river feeds into here? This is the Pearl River. The Pearl River. All right. Yep. So, Jenna, tell us a little, little bit about the town here. If some angler was to roll in, uh, what's the population of this town? And a uh, little bit about uh, lodging and uh, food in this area. Well, what I love about this lake is that there's more to it than just a cabin around it. Um, we have very nice hotels you can stay in. This is also a family-friendly community. Uh -huh. So if you, you're fishing with your family or your spouse, there's plenty for them to do here. Uh, while you're out on the lake and they're not constantly nagging you saying when you're coming off the water i'm bored mm, right. you know we have plenty of retail space shopping here we have inside malls outside malls we have awesome parks and uh, facilities for the family the kids and we've got some trails that you've been on already right. uh, plenty of biking trails walking trails and then um like i said we've got some awesome restaurants that are, are family friendly but we also have some guys restaurants so just you and your buddies are coming down to fish and we've got plenty of places for you to eat as well is there a lot of good uh, fresh water like uh, fish type restaurants in this area because we are getting closer to uh, the golf you do you see a lot of fresh seafood and a lot uh -huh. of fresh um fish as well uh matter of fact right there on the reservoir you've got cock of the walk mm -hmm. and you some of the best fish in the state of mississippi wow so how does a reservoir like a ross barnett how does it end up on the uh, crappie trail is it was it your number one pick <laughs> is that a loaded question <laughs> very loaded question um <laughs> Kind Look, what, you can only get five other people mad at you, Mike. So I'll go with what Brad was talking about, how good the fishing is in this lake. And a lot right. of people are talking about it um, that are coming and fishing it for the first time. Right. So it's easy for them. Mm -hmm. you, think, um, you think the amount of area also makes a difference? It seemed like the ones that you pick were, were pretty big. You didn't pick reservoirs that were small. I mean, so you're picking some that are more popular but they also have tournament trails on right yeah we picked um the top six probably of um the lakes there's still a lot of lakes in mississippi right. that have great crappie fishing and hopefully we can expand the trail to include oh, some I of gotcha. those yep. so um but we just had to start with um probably the top six and hopefully we can expand there you go so brad tell us uh what techniques are you using mm. to catch fish you know give us a quick seasonal yeah. overview you know um pre-spawn and 
you know, the, they really start spawning, I would say, about the second week in March here on this lake. Uh-huh. And it'll carry on all the way through the end of May for the most part. <clears throat> and I like long line trolling. That's kind of what I've known for, you know, across the nation is long line trolling. And right. I do it and catch a lot of fish, lose a lot of lures, but we catch a lot of fish. And uh, what I mean by long line trolling, that's actually just throwing the lures out the backside of the boat and right. pretty much keeping it in, in on a certain speed and going with it. And uh, we cover a lot what? of water and, you know, catch a lot of fish doing it. Are those soft plastic baits? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm known for Bobby Garland baits, and uh-huh. that's what I use a lot of. Uh, the stroller, that's the my number one bait on any lake, you know, when it comes to back to colors, and I even kind of give right. some tidbits on colors as far as this lake goes. Okay. <clears throat> and, and it's called Grenada Gold, and uh, mm-hmm. but it's a really good color on this lake, and it's it's caught thousands of fish this year. I can, I can tell you that for a fact. Uh, another good one would be Keystone Candy, which is a purple chartreuse color. I would definitely have some of those in my mix, and uh, one of my all-time favorites is a color called Vegas. Uh, so you can kind of imagine it's kind of shy, shiny and bright. and um, But I'll long line with those all the way to, you know, about mid-May. And, and then I've switched. Um, everybody knows the term live scope when it comes to crappie fishing now, and that's the biggest right. thing. <clears throat> and I'm not really a uh, known for a, a single pole fisherman and probably will never be. But uh, with the aid of live scope, I've kind of changed my summertime tactics more than I, I had in the past. And what I'm doing with uh, summertime here on the Ross Barnett is uh, actually cast into brush piles. You know, I'll take my boat and sit it back right. 25, 35 feet from it and actually anchor it down with talons. And, you know, we sit back and cast to them. And, you know, we, we, we really catch a lot of fish. These fish on this lake, and to kind of tell you an example how good this lake really is, is I've got an area out here and, and you know, waypoints will be given. Right. But, um, <laughs> On this one particular spot, I would say it's about the size of a football field. And every day this summer, I, and it's no exaggeration, I guarantee it's 5,000 fish sitting in this one football area. Wow. And, I mean, they're just everywhere. They're just really loaded up. So you can sit back and sit in one spot and cast until, until you catch your limit. And that's what we do all summer. Wow. It, it's, you know, once you kind of find, and there's a, tons of areas like this on this reservoir. You just got to get out there and find some of these brush piles, and they're out there, and they're loaded. Right. But uh, we sit back and cast to them, and I'll do that, and I could do it today with it. And I'll kind of switch tactics whenever it gets a little bit colder. You know, we're moving into the fall, winter stage, and uh, these fish will, will migrate uh, up north, up into the river system. And they'll follow the bait. Up, they'll follow the shad migration up north into the river system. And then I like going back to long line trolling. So I'll switch my tactics, early spring, long lining, summertime, cast into brush piles, fishing standing timber, and then the fall and the winter, I'll go back to long line trolling. I got gotcha. you. So it's really fun. good for guiding, long line yeah. trolling, right? Yeah, both of them is. You know, I take people from, you know, literally five years old to 95, and they can sit in my boat and catch fish. Right. Um, you know, when you come to some tactics, you know, it requires a good bit of skill, a good uh-huh. bit of practice. You know, the guy driving the boat or steering the boat and controlling the boat is doing uh, most of the technique for them. Right. So a person can sit back with little to no skill and as long as they can hold a pole and a reel in fish, they're going to catch them just as good as anybody else. Because, like I said, it goes back to the control of the boat and the speed and, you know, the, the whole technical side of it right. that catches the fish. But uh, it, it's in by far – one of the best ways in my mind is to take take people fishing as far as guiding goes. What's the length limit and what's the, the <laughs> limit of This fish? lake has no size limit. Uh-huh. Uh, and I've talked to the biologists through the years, and we keep you know really good track with them. Is he, he'll flat out tell you, you would do more harm to this lake by putting a limit on it as far as the you. length limit. Because there's so many fish in here. Uh-huh. And that goes back oh. to, you know, if you want to keep a lot of fish, you can keep 30 fish per person per day. Wow. And you can keep, uh, as far as the state law goes, you can keep a seven-day limit. So you can come down here for seven days, and if you're fortunate enough to catch, you know, 30 fish per day, you right. can leave with 210 fish. Right. 
Man, that's a lot of crappie. You better have some Smith Products flay knives oh, if yeah. you're doing that. And some Ziplocs. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Ziplocs. Jana, tell us, tell us about lodging. How How is the lodging set up? Are we close to the lake from town? What's the distance from town to, say, some of the campgrounds right, there? Right, from our um, launch dock there to where we are here today, which is the Renaissance shopping area, you're 10 minutes. 10 minutes. At the most. Um, and also, um, we have a boat washing station there at our launch. Uh-huh. So you can wash your boat when you come out of the lake. And then several of our hotels have outlets. Um, and we're working with more of our hotels to get more outlets for our fishermen for their boats. Right. Um, and then, and also you can park your boat and trailer and there's plenty of places to walk, like where you're staying, you know, there's uh-huh. plenty of places to walk and eat and shop right there without even having to get back in your boat and your truck. You have some campgrounds around the lake that people can go if they wanted to stay more, a little more rustic type. Right. We do. We have several campgrounds that surround the lake. The lake surrounds uh-huh. actually three counties. Um, right. And so, and several cities touch the lake. Um, Ridgeland is one of my, my favorite parts of it. Right. So, uh, but yes, we do have several campgrounds and cabins and uh, RV parks. Is uh, Ridgeland, is that the, uh, like the dam end of the, of the reservoir then? Yeah. Yeah. So... So they're going to have deeper water on this end and shallower up? Well, for maybe. the most part, more flat, yeah. so I would say, um, more consistent consistent depth of water right. on this end. And it's kind of, um, you know, it's it's got a real good safe boat ramp. And what I mean by safe boat ramp, by okay. when people think of that term, it's got wave blockers as far as whenever wow. the – the weather gets up, and everybody knows, especially in the springtime, weather's going to get up. Uh-huh. But it has a set of wave blockers that protects you whenever you're loading and unloading a boat. I got gotcha. you. Uh, years passed before that, it, it got a little hairy, but since they installed these, you can unload uh-huh. and load a boat at no no matter what the wind condition is. Another real good thing about that is um, safe parking as far as you know, that goes, but also clean restrooms. Right. That's something that you might not think about, but if you're bringing, especially right. you and your wife or, or your kids, you want somewhere safe that they can go in and use the restrooms. And we've got real good, clean bathrooms, and um, my people use them every day, and I do too as well. But uh, every time we go in there, they're real nice and clean. So. Yep. So, Mike, uh, what other facilities are around the lake there? How many how many boat ramps roughly are there? Roughly, probably six or eight probably popular does. ones. Yeah, the ones that are probably modern. your main ones. Yeah, uh-huh. main ones that tournaments go out of. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you've got you know anywhere from the south end of the lake to the north end of the lake, as far as boat ramp goes, and even in the middle, uh, we've got boat ramps completely all the way around the right the, the, oh. lake, the lake itself. Are they? Uh, uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, who owns the shoreline then, Mike? Pearl River Valley um, controls everything around the lake. Um, okay. So they have the upkeep and all the facilities that. Um, I got you. He's talking about there. So do you have to pay a fee to get uh, into the park? Are these state parks? Is there a state park there? No. They're, no? they're um, Pearl River Valley's parks. Oh, all right. There's no launch fee, no kind of permit wow. or anything like it. You, need, you just need fishing license. That's pretty unique to uh, have nice resources mm-hmm. when when it's coming from someone, you know, besides the state or someone that's paying for that. Right. But, man... Tell us some more about the town. Well, there's also right there at the boat launch, um, there's two restaurants. Um, uh-huh. Well, there's three restaurants now. Uh-huh. We've, we've had a third one open up. But one uh-huh. of my favorites is Pelican Cove, and you can pull your boat, never take your boat out of the water, pull up, and usually they have live music going. Right. You can sit out on the patio, go inside, get a great hamburger, get seafood. You name it, uh-huh. they've got it. And so it's right there. And they also have a f- refueling station right there as well. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. right at our launch, we are your one-stop shop is how I see it um, on the Ridgeland side of it. Oh, wow. A lot of good information there. That takes us over to Tackle Time and this uh, week's Tackle Time. Pico Lures, we're going to talk about. All their crappie baits. They have all kinds of crappie baits. You can find all their soft plastics on their website at picolures.com. And Smith Consumer Products. I was showing Brad our cool little multi-tool. It's seven and three-quarter inches. Something you can put on your belt. You can take around. Probably try not to lose it. That's the biggest thing usually with tools like that. But it has a little lanyard 
section on it so you can hook that to it but uh, you can check out all of the uh, smith consumer products uh, right on their website at smithproducts.com and uh, so tell them more tell them uh, the crappie trail mississippi crappie trail where can they find out more information on that uh, mississippi crappie trail.com um, it covers the six lakes Arkabutla, enid sardis grenada um, Barnett Reservoir that we're here on now, and Lake Washington. Okay. And you can um, go to the website, uh, MississippiCrappieTrail.com. There's a trip planner there. You can plan your trip. It has all the resources that you would need to um, plan a trip to come to Mississippi and fish. And that's brand new, right? Yes, it's just brand just... new. Um, just launched it 1st of October. Do you have a lot of pictures of Brad holding up uh, mm. crappie? Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Coming soon. Is Coming that right? Soon. Is that what? Is what, what the yeah. tag says. Coming All soon. Right. Brad, if they wanted to find out some more about uh, your guide service, tell me you also have a podcast show. So Yeah, um, yeah. I do a little bit of everything in the crappie fishing world, I guess you would say. It's something that, uh, you know, we're all striving to keep growing this whole community when it comes to crappie fishing. Right. It's called the Crappie Connection. Been doing it about three years. Uh, we, you know, we get listeners from all across the world, and we really dive into the techniques and, you know, the all aspects just like you're doing pretty much. Um, also, as far as guiding goes, I got on the Ross Barnett. Been doing it, uh, I want to say about 10 years. Wow. I still have another job or another business that I own as well. So springtime, I pretty much got every day of the week from mid-February to about mid-May. I'm on the water really about every day of the week. Wow. And then uh, in summertime, I'll kind of cut back and I'll guide uh, two to three days a week. And that's usually just during the week weekdays i like to right. guide uh the reservoir here in the barnet is so active with everybody skiing it's not really my favorite time to crappie fish on it and then back in the fall i got uh friday saturdays and sundays <clears throat> here and then also lake washington which you know you have another podcast about washington as well but yep. i can be found on you know facebook brad chapel guide service phone number is uh 601-317-6681 there you go and uh, Jenna, tell us tell us uh, where they can find more information about Ridgeland and and also a little bit more about the town. So yes. kind of tease them on get get coming <laughs> here and uh, visiting. Well, we have um, like I said, uh, we have over sixteen hundred hotel rooms. So we've got from you, you name it, we can we can provide you know whatever type of hotel you're looking for. Um, our website is visitridgeland.com. Um, but if you go to the Crappie Trail website, you can also access our website. And on the Crappie Trail, it's got our hotels listed and itineraries. Uh -huh. um, and all you got to do is just give me a call. I'll take care of you and find you a hotel room that's best for you, what your needs are. And then I can help plan your itinerary. If it's going on a guy with Brad or, uh -huh. um, you know, if you know, got your family with you and you need things for them to do, I can, I can take care of that for you, too. Can you uh, tease them with one? What's your favorite? What's your favorite place to go and uh, hang out by the lake? Is there a park that you like to to go and? There and is. Hang? There's a park. There's a, a disc golf park right there oh. on the water. Uh -huh. um, that this part of Pearl River. Um, but we also in the springtime in May we have a huge Natchez Trace Century ride, which is a bike ride that starts right there on the water and um what is also great about this water is the natchez trace basically goes over the water uh, so if you're really? traveling the natchez trace we're your first stop you know that you need to get off on and there's a park right there um and then like i said we've got plenty of eats locations right there uh -huh. um pelican Cove is probably one of my favorite cock mm -hmm. of the walk um they they toss the cornbread up right there in front of you and catch it in the skillet and that's oh, wow. one of my favorite pieces of cornbread you'll find in mississippi so a lot of great things here in ridgeland all right there you have it so like i always like to end the show is make sure you keep your hook sharp and your lures in the water <laughs> <laughs>